you read the entirety of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you will see that there are three specific topics in this particular chapter that Paul is focusing on. Number one is speaking in, speaking in tongues. Number two is prophecy. And number three, it's public worship. Okay, so the chapter is focusing on speaking in tongues, prophecy, and public worship. I want you to take your attention to 1 Corinthians 11, starting with verse 1. Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 14 that women should be silent in church, take more of a subordinate place, as the law says, not the Roman law, but the law of God that suggests women are, uh, they, they are not the head of the house or the head of the man, but the man is the head of the woman, as Christ is the head of the church. Pay attention. Paul is addressing a particular topic we know that he's not saying that women should not pray or prophesy. Here's why. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, he says this, imitate me just as I also imitate who? Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. But I want you to know that the Head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having head covered, dishonors his head. Pay attention. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. So we see that Paul is not saying that women should not pray. And prophesy. We see that Paul is not saying that women should not preach the gospel. We see that Paul does not give a mandate that women don't have a grace and an anointing. Many of us come from denominations where the women only, uh, the women should only cook and pray. But the women of God could not preach. Some theologians suggests that women should not be pastors or preachers of the gospel. But Paul has not said that because he clearly clears up the notion and the significance and the power of the woman in 1 Corinthians 11, that women as well as men should pray, should prophesy. The only distinction is a man is inappropriate when he has his head uh, uh, covered in worship and a woman is inappropriate if she has her head uncovered in worship so pay attention watch this in eastern culture you say pastor why should a woman have her head covered remember the scripture is written not to a western culture but for a western culture it is written to an eastern culture so a woman having her head exposed would suggest promiscuity. It would suggest that she may be uh, licentious, if you will. A man having his hair, head covered in the house of God would suggest that he is inappropriate. Other than that, look at your neighbor and say, other than that, a woman has just as much anointing to preach, pray, and prophesy as a man. So pastor, why would Paul say that a woman or women should be silent in the house of God? Look at your neighbor and say, context is king. Not content, but context. So not what you post on social media, but context is king. In this particular passage of scripture, Paul is addressing the Jewish culture, there's a particular setting, watch this, in Jewish culture, you would have church 
uh, 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 women and men would not sit together. Women would sit on one side and men would sit on another. Reminds me of an old teacher I had by the name of Lorraine Harris. When we would go on field trips, she would say, boys on the left, girls on the right. So this is how the Corinthian church looked. While worship was going on, boys would be on the left and girls would be on the right. What would happen is while there was prophecy and while there was speaking in tongues and while there was teaching of the Holy Scriptures, the wives would blurt out, Yo, babe! That ain't right what he said. The wives would sit in church and create, here it is, this is the part you're going to shut down on, create chaos. And so Paul says that it's okay to be inquisitive. It's okay to even want sound doctrine. It's okay to remind the church of the order of God. But God is not the author of confusion. So if you have a question, comment, or concern, pay attention. Here's the shout if you catch it. You have to wait until you go home. Look at your neighbor and say, and ask your man. And what's so powerful to me Brother Minister Bronze is that, Pastor V, this shows us that, hear me, men in the New Testament ran the church. That men were theologically sound. That men understood spiritual things. That men understood how to interpret whether or not a prophetic voice was godly or no. Because, hear this, in order to bring clarity to something that was taught, in order to explain the scriptures, in order to help my wife understand revelation, I have to first experience or study or subject myself to the master. That, that I hear this, that, that if in fact, pay attention, if in fact I'm going to explain the accuracy of the scriptures, to my wife I have to be a student of the word of God lest Paul says your man can get home hear this I won't be at home with you all here's Paul talking I will not be at home with you Paul will not be at home with you the teacher will not be at home with you so if you have a question about the things of God you gotta go and ask the leader of your home because the leader of your home home uh, understands God uh, and he has the ability God I feel this uh, in the Holy Ghost uh, he has the ability uh, to teach you uh, what thus says the Lord uh, I feel like running on this uh, so it helps us understand this minister Corey that the early church uh, the women didn't have to drag their men to church uh, the early church uh, the women didn't have to pray that their husbands would get saved uh, look at your neighbor and say if you want to understand God better uh, in the early church you had to go through the man if you wanted to understand the heart of God you gotta ask your husband if you don't understand what God is saying to you in this season you gotta ask your husband I pray and prophesy that on this Father's Day God would bring back men who are theologically sound God would bring back men who understand the heartbeat of God God would bring back men who want to sit with God on a daily basis uh, and I pray that the women of this generation uh, would seek not just a boss uh, but a man that knows uh, God for, as his personal Lord and Savior uh, this is why God says uh, the man is the head of the wife yeah. 
Be seated. Hear this. Men knew God. I'm not talking about no religious spirit. Watch this, Sean. You come to mind when I think about this, uh, that in order for you to lead your house, here it is, uh, in order for you to lead your house, uh, you have to go back to uh, the garden. Uh, you have to get with God for a season uh, so that you can understand the things of God. Uh, I'm not talking about no YouTube. Uh, I'm not talking about no Jehovah Witness foolishness. Uh, I'm not talking about no Hebrew Israelite, the black man God, the black woman king. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, mother may I that God is a woman. Uh, I ain't talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about uh, a man that has been on his face uh, and studied the bread of heaven. I'm talking about a man uh, that has turned off Netflix. Uh, I'm talking about a man that after he gets off work uh, he opens his Bible. Uh, I'm talking about a man that on his lunch break uh, he has his Bible and his concordance. Uh, I'm talking about a man that has uh, his Bible, his, cor his concordance and his uh, dictionary. I'm talking about a man uh, that when before he opens his Bible uh, he prays and he says Lord speak to me. Uh, I'm talking about a man that has set under uh, a rabbi. I'm talking about a man that has asked the hard questions uh, so that he may be proficient uh, in, ask, in answering kingdom questions. Uh, I'm not talking about no man uh, that's out in the streets bossing up. Uh, if you're going to lead your family uh, and if you're going to be a man of God, uh, you got to take yourself uh, through a process uh, of tutelage. Uh, you got to take yourself uh, through a process of schooling. Uh, you got to take yourself uh, to a quiet place uh, in God. Uh, I'm not talking about a man uh, that's worried about money for a season. Uh, I'm talking about a man that for a season uh, he's isolated himself uh, so that he may understand the revelation of heaven. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that it is the God, don't miss this, uh, that it is uh, the pleasure of God to conceal a matter. Uh, but it is the pleasure of a, a king to search it out. Uh, I'm talking about kings that want to know what God meant uh, when he said let there be I'm talking about a man that's not arguing if Jesus is real I'm talking about a man that knows him for himself I'm talking about a man that knows that the Christ is real I'm not talking about a man that's arguing whether or not Jesus is a black man I'm talking about a man that daily prepares for the coming back of the Messiah I'm talking about a man that spends time speaking in his heavenly language to unlock the mystery of the heavens. I'm talking about a man that wars with God. I'm talking about a man that's faced with temptation and instead of falling, he wrestles with God. I'm talking about a man that's asking God, show me your glory. Show me your beauty. I'm talking about a man that does not want to be a pimp or a player. I'm talking about a man that wants to be a king in the kingdom. I ain't talking about no man that's saying I was hurt by my daddy. I'm talking about a man that's gotten on his face and said, Abba is my new daddy. Uh, can you high five two people and say, send me a man that knows the man. Uh, send me somebody that's been with Jesus uh, that while he's working on the line, uh, while he's working on the force, uh, while he's working as a firefighter, uh, he ain't just working, but people can't see him, uh, but he's praying in his heavenly language. Uh, he's saying, Father, lead me. Father God, I'm talking about a man of God. How is it that Paul, the apostle, would refer a woman to a Christless man? Let me help you. I want to give you this. Mama said, when I met your daddy, he wasn't halfway, he wasn't halfway saved. My dad was a young Marine, and you know that uniform just attracts pimp juice. But then she said, all of a sudden, I feel like preaching to the men. She said, all of a sudden, I'll never forget it, as long as I live, he, he shot past me. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me help you real quickly. Don't you despise small beginnings. I know your man don't know how to quote two scriptures, but all of a sudden, I prophesy in this room over the men that there is a releasing of the all of a sudden. I ain't talking about suddenly he blessed me. I ain't talking about suddenly he provided for me. I ain't talking about suddenly he gave me a house. I'm talking about suddenly I had a walk with him. Suddenly I knew how to lay hands on the sick. Suddenly I knew how to raise the dead. Suddenly I knew how to quote scripture. Suddenly I knew how to preach the gospel. Shout and say, Lord, send me a suddenly. Oh, that man I ain't ready. I'll tell you when to come in. Shout suddenly. Pay attention. You have to be very careful that you pay attention that you don't model your man after your pastor now hear me don't argue with me while you were in the club or going hear me going to strip clubs for vacation I was in church I ain't never been to the strip club to eat wings So don't argue with me. Subconsciously, you will compare. <laughs> Subconsciously. Now don't miss this. Don't miss this. You have, watch this. This is the danger of having a father. I'm talking about a real one. I ain't talking about one that just send money. The danger of having a father that creates a high standard is no one measures up to the example in which was, God, I feel you. So, 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 so what I've noticed is that fathers be wanting their, their daughters to get married to, and be asking why they aren't married. Well, they're not married because of the standard in which you created. That, that it's hard to impress a woman that has a father. It's hard, hear me, huh? because your little red ugly car that you rented to take me out on a date to, don't impress me. Huh? That, 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 that taking me out to five guys ain't enough. Huh? Absolutely not. Huh? And so the problem, here it is. Huh? And so look at your neighbor and say, I got to have a balance. I got to have a balance. The problem with having a spiritual father is that you think that the man that God's going to give you came ready already. That he came made up. Well, you didn't come made up. You just look better as a bum. Oh, yeah. And so what you got to understand is, look at your neighbor and say, more grace. The man that God has for you, when you meet him, he may know how to say, Lord, lay me down to sleep. When I get up, wake me up and keep uh, but give him five years uh, he'll talk with the power of God running through his veins look at your neighbor and say give me time Man, I wish the men were up here with me. Give me time. I ain't no pastor. I come from the hood. My daddy wasn't no preacher. My mama wasn't no intercessor. I had to raise myself. I couldn't go to church because we ain't had no car. How is it that you want a man to come readily made when while you were six, you were in the suburbs. But when he was six, he was raising his brothers and sisters because his mama was HIV positive. Look at your neighbor and say, give me time. This must not be a good message for nobody. I ain't done. Watch this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. So, Paul, hear me. Because we skip over this because we are not intellectual, theologically. That we skip over this and we suggest that Paul was sexist. Or misogynistic. No, Paul is responsible not for your house. He's responsible for the house. Yeah. 
So Paul goes to the church of Corinth. And because they are new converts, they don't understand Jewish custom. So they are saved, but they don't know the, hear this, they don't know church decorum. And so they are inquisitive because they are new converts. But they don't understand that in order to, to, to understand the things of God, there is, here it is, y'all, here's the word, an order. Oh, uh, come on, look at your neighbor and say, order in the church. I feel like running in this room uh, that God did not design the woman to set order. Uh, oh yeah, pastor, how you know? Uh, when we go to the etymology of creation, uh, we understand that God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, then the Bible says he created the fish in the sea, the birds of the air. Uh, then the Bible says he created a garden. Uh, but the Bible says that rain had not yet come to the garden. Uh, so shrubbery and grass uh, was on its way. Uh, but watch this, pay attention. Uh, and then it specifies that there were several rivers passing through the garden. So what God was saying uh, that in a moment the garden is not going to be as organized as I created it. But who creates the order? Have you ever passed by a house uh, that had the grass had not been cut in years? Uh, oh, do y'all watch those TikTok videos of men cutting grass uh, and you just sit there and stare at it? I just love watching people cut grass. Well, what God did was uh, he said so that the garden will not be chaotic I'm not going to place a woman in it. Ooh, I'm going to place a man in it. A man is responsible for cleaning house. Where there is perversion, God raises up a man. Where there is violence, God raises up a man. Where there is disarray, God raises up a man. Where there is confusion, God raises up a man. Where there is no identity, God raises up a man. Where there is an identity crisis, God raises up a man. Where there is a prayerless culture, God raises up a man if the community is drug infested he raises up a man I know you're staring at me because we black and you hadn't seen a man well let me prophesy every man under the sound of my voice God is about to raise you up watch this Dr. Jill go back and tell them that it don't matter how many jeans you put on to look like me. The earth does not respond to your authority. Watch this man of God. Everybody is talking about genetics and how people are genetically born. Well, let me help you understand something. Genetics is not spiritual. So that's why the trans community is right. All the all these LGBTQ plus and binary and othernary and all the other areas, they are actually right. Stop arguing with them that people can be genetically wired a certain way. Here's how. As soon as they hit the earth's airwaves they come into a carnal realm but there is something before you hit the airwaves the bible says that when God created man he didn't put genetics in him he put pneuma in him that the thing that trumps genetic is the breath of God so when God breathed into you you were a man when God breathed into you you were a woman but you got rewired because you came in the earth where the prince of the air which is Satan rules But today is the day that men are about to catch on fire. And our first order of business is to rewire all genetics. Do I have men in the room that got the pneuma of God in their belly? What the trans world needs is not another argument. They need an encounter with the pneuma. Can you do me a favor and say, blow, wind, blow? Hear this. Pay attention. Women cannot change the trajectory of the generation. 
That ain't your assignment. Your assignment is to partner with a man with identity. This is why the Bible says uh, that Joanna, Suez, Susanna, and Mary Magdalene, after they uh, were delivered, uh, they followed Jesus and gave their resources. Uh, the, the disciples were already there. Uh, but watch this. Uh, it takes a, a woman to partner with uh, an apostolic assignment. Uh, I feel like running in this room. Uh, ladies, I need you to get back in your place. Uh, I need you to stop trying to build it and look for some one that wants to build something look for a man that wants to build the kingdom it ain't enough to build a house and to invite everybody over for pictures oh yeah don't just build them don't just find a man that has his own house but do you have an assignment for the culture are you mad about something I know you in real estate and I know you do Bitcoin but do you care about this generation and today is the day where 25 men say I'm sick of just looking for money give me a devil in hell to kill it's tough it's tough ain't it? what I'm finding out watch this men of God in the room watch this pay attention I know I'm right that when it comes for the black man, he will secretly say he's against perversion. He'll whisper it in the barber shop. But if you ask yourself, what, what man is vocal about the deception in our culture? It'll be hard to answer it. That's the time I'm going somewhere. Watch this. Ask your man what's your stance on these social issues. And he'll whisper it to you. I don't agree. But he's not bold. He won't take a public stance. Y'all ready? Because he's afraid of losing his job. Oh. Pastor, what you mean? He won't say nothing. He won't say nothing. Uh, uh, he, 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 won't, uh, he won't be loud and proud about his conviction uh, because uh, he's afraid of losing his job. Uh, but the reason he's afraid of losing his job uh, is because uh, you won't be with him without one. That you got to understand uh, that for the last 75 years, uh, we have suggested that the significance of a man uh, is his work, uh, where he works. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, if a man drives the bus, uh, you won't marry him. Uh, if a man owns companies, uh, then he's qualified. Uh, but I'm here to let you know, uh, there's a bus driver uh, that just was, he was just held hostage uh, and he didn't die. Uh, there's another man on that bus that gave his life to protect somebody else uh, and I know some uh, real estate agents that won't bust a grape uh, uh, feel like running uh, all these negroes that you looking at saying got money won't fight for nothing won't stand for nothing uh, won't protect you if somebody ran, uh, ran up and grabbed you on your butt uh, but it's some of us that straight from the east side uh, that the money hadn't gotten to us uh, we will kill a negro if you touch our children we will we ready to stay Stand up for injustice. Look at your neighbor and say, send me that man. The more money you get, the weaker you become. And you don't realize because you go into his house and you walk in the living room and you're stepping on a shark tank. You've gotten coddled with comfortability that you forgot. You don't realize that he don't stand for nothing. Why is it quiet in this room?
And so until you stop overlooking the man with deep character. Oh, I plead the blood over Atlanta social media. I declare that the scales would drop off of your eyes. You can get married. He right here in the church, right here at your job. I said what I said. He may not have muscles, but he has a conviction. Oh, yeah, I feel like preaching. He may not have abs, but he knows how to pray. Oh, yeah. He may be a little chubby, but he'll fight a Negro if he walk up in the house. Y'all got men that if somebody breaks in the house they'd be like go check and see the devil is a liar men should be vicious This is why I have a problem with uh, the charismatic church. Y'all sing feminized songs. Uh, that's why men just stand there. Uh, it must be masculine energy in the house of God. Uh, all this CCM, no MAN songs. Uh, I need to know about a God that's a lion and a lamb. It's too much clapping in the 21st century church. We need running, jumping, and shouting. We need, we need, so we need a, a, a sound that'll break chairs. Because when that devil come and touch your kids with some type of false, false doctrine, you ain't gonna be singing CCM. You gonna be in that room saying, to "Unplug everything!" And I declare, "Come on, get out of my house, Satan!" Look at your neighbor and say, "Send me a warrior." I'll be the helper. Thank you, Shelby. Because, watch this. I'm a pastor. And British, hear me. What I'm noticing, Pastor Nick, is women want weddings. They don't want men. I have never seen so many women try to work out to be in a dress. And as soon as they got the man, they go back to stuffing themselves with a, a group of gropper cakes. That means you have no intention on keeping my attention long term. God. You married a man, not your home girl. Y'all got quiet on that. I need you to shout. Yeah, do it. Because that's not your homegirl. Your homegirl will watch you gain weight and say, girl, you getting thick. Your husband will look at you and say, oh, yeah, is you straight, babe? Yeah, y'all real quiet. What I'm noticing is that women want weddings. But let me help you. I'm a pastor. Married people are too quiet in this generation. Married people need to tell single folk, hold your horses. Because nothing can prepare you for a child that says, I think I like boys, and they are a boy. Now, 
Now, we got some sick parents in the world. But for those of us who are kingdom. Nothing can prepare you for when your husband goes to the doctor for a regular checkup. And we, here we have a member that went to the doctor, found out he had cancer, sat in his parking lot for hours trying to wrap his mind around how he's going to tell his wife that I'm young but you got to walk with me through a crisis called cancer. No wedding can prepare you for a phone call. Say, hear me, I'm in the gym. I work, I hear me. I work out with people from everywhere. I work out with a lady that was just on the news. She lost her baby girl to a person speeding through the mall. Hit the girl, killed her instantly. Nothing can prepare you for the phone call that your little baby girl has just died in an accident. I'm a police officer. I've gone to the scene where children are in the windshield. I've gone to the scene where college students are dead in front of me. Weddings can't prepare you for real life. Nothing can, compare, nothing can prepare you for the day and he looks at you and says, I'm not in love with you anymore. No wedding can prepare you for that. The only thing that will give you a fighting chance is if both of y'all know the supreme being. Paul is not saying that the woman should be silent. He's establishing that the man sets the order. Y'all ready? Yeah, I got to let you go. I ain't even get to my message. Many of you are, many of you are offended I feel this in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. See, thank you, man of God. When you pray for a man and you got a child, Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? If you got a child yeah. and the child's father is not, y'all not together, yeah. and you're praying for a man, and you happen to find a man that's willing in this culture to take you and your baby or babies. Pay attention. If he comes to the house and says, well, hey, I understand you got children, you got responsibilities. I'll just come to the house and sit around and chill, no obligation, because a single man ain't going to want all that. A man, most men want to go, and say, it's just you and I. But if a man says, I'm willing to accept you and your children, I'm going somewhere. You don't know where I'm going. Don't narrate my message. He comes to the house and, oh, I feel this in the Holy Spirit. He comes to the house. After three or four times of coming to the house, he notices every time he comes, the children are running around Screaming and cussing. Irate. You say sit down. They continue to run faster. The house ain't clean. 
Watch this. I'm, I'm going somewhere. And he takes it upon him because it's his nature. I, 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 I feel Nick start the car. Because, because some of y'all are with women trying to look like us. And it's cool while y'all are romantically connected. But you're going to see that when y'all have a child some way, that that child don't respond to them like they respond to a man. You can put on overalls, Timberlands, suspenders, all you want. I want somebody to come up here and try to, try to hit me. The man finally says, because it's in his nature, he finally says, yo, 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 uh, Jay Sean. Rufus and Tommy, sit down. This is what's in this generation. This generation of women won't sit there and be like, mm. they are cuss the man out. No, don't talk to my children like that. They're not children. They acting like they're in Jurassic Park. And it's in my nature. You have to understand it's in your nature to be able to put up with it for a long time. But a man's nature is to create order. And so I know you ain't my blood, but you're in my presence. And finally, after five years, Jason, Tommy, and Rufus, they sit, they sag and pamper behind down. Y'all not understand. And you go off on, y'all ready? You go off on the Adam that God sent to establish order in your life. Real men are agitated with chaos. Watch this, y'all. Oh, no, no, no. Paul was just talking about the church. Uh uh. He cleared out the church and sent you to a place of order called home. It's time to go. Watch this, y'all. I can't finish all of it today. Pastor, what's the point? That some of you have cursed covenant because you didn't understand the vibration. Of order. He's not a nurturer by nature. He learns nurturing from you. He's a judge by nature. Watch this, y'all. He's going to bless you. And he is not responsible for just setting order over the children. Watch this, men of God. Got two seconds on this. After you have established order in your own life, I wish I could preach that all day. After you have established order in your own life, watch this, ladies. He's supposed to help you figure it out an easier way. Y'all, 
Ladies, don't be offended when sometimes he says, not being rude, not, but sometimes he says, babe, you're talking too much. Yeah, you see, you see, I know my church and I know people that don't go here. Don't be offended when he says, now, nah, babe, why would you post that? Now, nah, babe, why would you wear that? Now, nah, babe, the dishes have been in the sink for four days. They've been in the sink so long, the water stank. <laughs> Y'all ready? I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go. Babe, now, we, we, I, I took you out to eat, and we had a good time. I want to talk to you about something. I noticed that you ran that waitress back and forth. And, and you left the tip and you gave them $2. Now, 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 come on, babe. We don't have servants. Don't nobody work for us. That's somebody's child. That's somebody's husband. That's somebody's wife. How would you like it if I came home with money in the form of $2? We probably wouldn't even be together. So, babe, next time, here's our family rule. We, we, we sow when we go out, at least $25 or more. I got one more, babe. I heard how you were talking to your mama on the phone. And men, Always get, they, they gonna hush when you do this one. Do this one, and they a hush. What does the word say about that? What does the Bible say about dishonoring? What does the Bible say about honoring your employers? Take her to the word. She, that ain't what that mean. Uh, <laughs> 